Hello my friends, how are y'all doing? Today is Friday, July 7th, and I'm back for my update. If you're new here, my name is Olivia, and this is my YouTube channel, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. This is a channel where I will typically talk about my cross-stitching as well as my quilting, so if that sounds like something you might be interested in, I hope you will stick around, and if you like what you see, I hope you will consider subscribing and hitting the like button. Today's video, I'm actually going to keep a little bit more fast paced than I normally do because when I am done, I have a big bowl full of berries that I need to process and make into jam. I do have a lot of stuff to show uh, because in my last video, I talked about something new that I was going to be doing with my stitch rotation and with my friends Yvette and Carol. So if you haven't watched my last video, definitely wanna maybe hit the pause button on this one and go back and watch that other one. So it explains why I decided to do what I am going to be doing with my rotation going forward. Before I show all that, I do want to mention a new floss tuber that I watched over the past two weeks. My floss tube viewing has been really sad. Um, I've only actually been able to catch two floss tube videos over the past two weeks, but I have a bunch loaded up into my queue to watch whenever I get a chance. In fact, today when I am processing those berries, I plan on turning on floss tube and listening to it while I work. But the new floss tuber is uh, Katie, the novel stitcher. And I just happened to stumble across her latest floss tube video. She gave me the sweetest shout out that I, it's the nicest thing anyone has ever said about me. And it was just so sweet of her to give my uh, channel a shout out. So thank you so very much, Katie. I really enjoyed watching her floss tube. She has a lot of wonderful projects that she showed. Just such a very sweet manner about her, and I think that you guys would really enjoy watching her floss tube video. So I will put a link to Katie's channel down below. And thank you, Katie, for your sweet shout out. Okay, so last time, uh, I talked about something new that I was gonna be doing with my stitch rotation, and I am doing it with my friends Yvette and Carol. And Yvette was actually the one who told me about it. But I knew um, from January until June, I knew that Carol and Yvette were having a grand time starting all those projects that they have wanted to work on. And it was always kind of fun to see what Yvette had started. And then she had told me that her and Carol were going to be doing, um, I'm going to call it a challenge, but basically they were going to do, do no new starts from July to December. And I thought that sounded like a lot of fun. And I had a lot of kitted projects that I really wanted to get to for a really long time. And I was just looking for something fun to sort of infuse joy back into my stitching. So I decided to join both of them. My last video, I showed the first handful of new starts that I had done. And then last week I started the rest of them uh, and how, uh, how it will work is I have assignments that uh, I already work on. So those assignments are Elizabeth Furness, Spooky Countdown, and Houses of Hawker and Hollow. And I decided to add Halloween at Holly Berry into those assignments as well. So that way, all four of those projects each month are getting a certain amount worked on until they are finished. And then later on in the year, um, or as we finish those projects, um, there are other uh, projects that I have to take their place. So I will always have some sort of assignment to work on. So once those assignments are done, all of the new projects that I have started are loaded up onto a wheel. And so when I finish my assignments, I will spin the wheel and the wheel will tell me what it is that I will be working on. And I can choose how long I want to work on it, whether I just want to put one thread in it or I want to work one day, two days, three a week or the rest of the month. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, when I went and started looking at all of my projects, I pulled things that were various sizes. So there's one sampler that is humongous. I think it's like the biggest sampler that I will ever, or as I'm working on it so far, it's the biggest sampler that I've ever worked on, all the way down to little smalls. So I have a big variety 
And after my last video, Yvette sent me a message and told me that I needed to add some Christmas smalls into the, the group because um, I would regret it if I didn't. And she's absolutely right. I would regret not having those little smalls. So I did add some of those in. But I feel like I have a really awesome batch of projects. I can't wait to get through my assignments and then spin the wheel and see what it lands on. I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so basically from uh, July 1st to December 31st, I will have no new starts except for a couple of exceptions. And then towards the end of the year, I will kind of stop and evaluate how I feel about it. Do, you know, I like having all of these whips in the mocking basket of whips, which by the way, the mocking basket of whips is very happy to have the amount of whips in it that it does. <laughs> But I will reevaluate and see how I feel about it. Is it something I want to keep going with? Do I want to just spend the next year just working on the stuff that I've already started? So I'm really looking forward to it. And I know in my last video, I did talk a little bit about why I'm doing it. So again, if you haven't watched it, definitely go check it out. But I do want to say thank you to everybody who left such kind and amazing comments on my last video. I was really worried um, of the feedback that I would get because a lot of times when someone starts a lot of projects, they definitely get some of that negative feedback. And um, I believe that every stitcher is different. You do you, so I'm going to do me. <laughs> Because it was a new month, I had to go and work on my assignments. I like to get them, I like to work on them at the beginning of the month and then that way the rest of the month I can play. But I uh, worked on Spooky Countdown by The Primitive Hair. I worked on this one for about a half an hour last night after I finished working on Elizabeth Furness. <laughs> and here is my progress. So this month, our assignment is to complete the remaining four blocks on the calendar. And then next month, we will complete the piece. So I have really enjoyed working on this one. And this is one that I'm working on with my friend Yvette. And we do plan on um, starting another autumn fall themed project when this is done. But I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count jack-o'-lantern and I am using the called for DMC. And I am using the back side of jack-o'-lantern. I had a couple people um, who were brand new to my Instagram and Facebook and um, they had bought the jack-o'-lantern and had started it on the other side and wanted to know why mine was so muted. And it's because uh, we decided to stitch ours on the back side. But I love working on this one and I cannot wait to get it finished. On July 1st, I started back on Elizabeth Furness 1836 by Hands Across the Sea Samplers. I'm stitching this with my friends Yvette and Becky Socks for Mom and Christy Crosshatch Quilts. Our July assignment was to come up into here and uh, work on this section of the border and then a little ways down the side. And right in here, I had to add an extra flower because I am planning on personalizing this with my great grandparents' names and I didn't want to leave that open spot. Then once I completed that, uh, we had to come down and work a little bit on the lawn section. So I was able to complete that section last night. There was an over one sheep I had to work on, which out of the two over one sheeps I had to stitch for this piece, the second one looks amazing. The first one, hot mess. <laughs> but here is my progress. So I think it looks so good. I cannot believe, every time I take it out of the cue snap and I look at it, I just cannot believe how far we have come. But I absolutely love it. I had somebody ask why it was I hadn't started working on the house yet. And I think early on we decided to do the house last. That's sort of like the icing on the cake. So love working on her so much. And I know I need, and I say this just about every video, I know I need to go and start charting out their names and all of that. But that, that's quite a job because <laughs> I have to do it by hand. I get out a 
um, like an algebra gridded paper and I chart it out that way by hand. <laughs> So love, love working on her and I'm looking forward to getting back to her again in August. So I'm stitching Elizabeth on a piece of 40 Count Bees Knees by Seraphim Fabrics and I'm stitching it with the DMC conversion listed in the chart and I am stitching it one over two, which means one strand of thread over two linen threads. And let me show you the over one sheet. So it is the one right here <laughs> that I finished last night. Oh, it looks so good. So last week I continued working on starting all the rest of the new starts that I had chosen. The first one I worked on was Letters for Santa by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. So this is my working copy. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count cream brulee by R&R, &R, I think. And I'm stitching it with various threads, one over two. So that was all the farther I got. <laughs> the next one is called Gather by Pineberry Lane. So I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count old mill java with the called for threads. And that is all the farther I got. I uh, loaded up into my hoop and started working on it. And then I had to, I had to stop and go do something. And I meant to get back and stitch a little bit more, but I just never did. <laughs> so one tiny little leaf. <laughs> the next one comes from the Blackbird book, When the Leaves Fall. And it is called Token of Love love this one it's got everything i love it's got a beautiful house and a big giant pumpkin so i am stitching this on a piece of 36 count dirty teacup by needle and flax and this is the first time that i've ever stitched on a piece of needle and flax linen so i'm excited to work on this one and see how i feel about the linen uh, a lot of people uh, give it rave reviews, so I am very excited to uh, work on it. But I'm stitching it with all of the called for threads, and I'm stitching it one over two. Next is Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. I remember when this first came out, I immediately pre-ordered it, and I had intended to start it the moment it came. I got all of the called for everything, and then Christmas was over. <laughs> But I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count Brenda's Brew and I am using all of the called for threads and I'm stitching it one over two. Looking forward to getting back to it. I've seen a couple of recent finishes and every time I see it finished, I love it more and more. So I'm really looking forward to getting to, or to spinning the wheel and seeing if it comes up. Next was Walk Beside by Tree of Life Samplings. And this one, I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count vintage country mocha and I'm using the called for threads and I'm stitching it one over two. I love this one, it's not very big and it's just so very sweet and I love the sentiment behind it. It's also the first time that I've stitched anything from this particular designer and her charts are amazing to read. Um, very well done. The next one is The Bells on Christmas Day by Blackbird Designs and I am stitching the sampler that is in the chart. I love this one. Um, I see it pop up every now and again on social media and I just really love it. So this one had to be one that I stitched. And here's my progress. I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count oaken, which is the called for linen. And I'm stitching it with all of the called for threads, one over two. And then we have Old White Farmhouse Sampler by Stacy Nash. And this was one that I, I think I was watching, um, Emily C, Eclectic Possessions, I think uh, earlier this year, or no, was it later last year? Uh, she showed it in her video and that was the first time I had ever seen it. 
and I fell immediately in love and was able to locate it and it came and I wanted to start it 60 times and never got the chance to and so this was definitely one that had to get into that wheel. So I'm stitching it on a piece of 30 or 40 count confederate gray and I am using the called for threads and I'm stitching it one over two. Then I started gathering the greens by Stacy Nash. So this is one that I, I, I've been absolutely in love with for years and I knew that it was going to have to jump in with these round of new starts. I had to have it on the wheel. So I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count Confederate gray and I am using the called for threads. And it's not an overly large sampler. Uh, the picture makes it seem like it is, but it's, it's about the same. Um, there's another one of Stacy Nash's designs. Um, I can't think what the name of it is. Cherry, Cherry Hill sampler. Uh, I, I stitched it a couple of years ago. I will flash a picture of it here, but it seems to be about that same size. And also by Stacy Nash, Mary Barr sampler. Uh, this is the, or will be, whenever I complete it, it will be the largest sampler that I have done to date. And I honestly think this will be in my rotation until I die. <laughs> But I am stitching it on a piece of 40 count of vintage country mocha, and I'm stitching it with the called for threads. I just have my piece of linen um, folded up. But uh, I actually, it was weird. I started working on it, and I felt like the border was really easy uh, to stitch. Uh, which I don't normally say that about borders. Usually you got to stay on your toes and really pay attention. But this one, I felt like the ease of stitching the border was was very nice. Um, and I didn't make any mistakes, knock on wood. But um, yeah, I just, uh, I was very pleasantly surprised when I was working on the border. So I'm looking forward to getting back to that one whenever it rolls up on the wheel. Then I decided that Harriet, um, I think it's either Goodard or Godard, uh, 1817 by Hands Across the Sea Samplers needed to be one of the ones I started. So this one is typically um, thought of as a Christmas sampler, but you could very easily leave it up year round. So I'm stitching Harriet on a piece of 40 count caramel by Seraphim Fabrics and I am using Vicki Clayton silks. I love uh, the brightness of it. It's definitely a little different than what I normally stitch. I tend to be more muted in my color palette, but I really like how this one uh, just kind of pops. And again, I just have my piece of linen folded up. The next one is What Remains by Blackbird Designs. I absolutely love this sweet, sweet sampler. I really am in love with the border. It reminds me a lot of cherries. I just really love it. I mean, definitely would be a very lovely summer sampler, but uh, this will be one that I definitely will leave up year round. And I am stitching it on a piece of 40 count straw with Vicki Clayton silks and I barely got a little bit of the border done. Uh, I made a mistake and I had to do some unpicking. So that is where I left it. So pretty and I'm really hoping that it's going to be okay on the linen that I chose um, because uh, the called for linen is 35 count straw so it should work. <laughs> This next one was a last minute start. I was on the very last day, it was June 30th, and it was late afternoon. I had gotten everything else started, and I walked past this one four or five times. I saw it sticking up with the rest of my kitted projects, and it really just called to me so loudly. I couldn't ignore it anymore, and I decided to start it. And that is You're a Grand Old Flag by Samplers Not Forgotten. I've also seen this one pop up recently on social media because it is a 4th of July, you know, very like patriotic summer stitch. So I've been seeing this a lot and I just absolutely love it. So I'm stitching your grand old flag on a piece of 36 count tin roof and I am using the called for threads. And I love how the border is popping against this linen. 
So really looking forward to getting to this one eventually and um, seeing its progress. I just can't wait. So glad I started it. And then on the last day of June 30th, I had a handful of smalls uh, that I had got ready to start. The first one is called Needle and Flax by Teresa Coget. Love this one. It's so beautiful. I've seen a couple people finish it and I just love it. It has all of my favorite things. So I will be stitching Needle and Flax on a piece of 40 count Malo and I am using the called for threads. I'm stitching it one over two and all I got was need. <laughs> I mean, basically the reason why I started there is because I had, so it calls for all DMC except for one week's Dye Works Onyx. And I just happened to have Onyx, but I didn't have any of the DMC. So I started it and then when I went to Hobby Lobby, I picked up the rest of the DMC for it. <laughs> so I love this. I have a feeling that when it rolls up on the wheel and it's time to stitch it, that's when I'm just going to stick with until it's done. And I went with um, some smalls, and the first one is Home Place at Christmas by Not Forgotten Farms, and I borrowed this chart from a friend, so this is my working copy. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count Vintage Country Mocha with DMC. And that is all the start I got. <laughs> And again, I just have my, um, I just have the linen folded up. So love this. And uh, this is a project that I've been wanting to work on for a while. Absolutely love it. It's such a beautiful uh, Christmassy one, but one that you could definitely leave up year round. So I did end up having to switch out some of the called for DMC. Uh, because the house with the DMC that was called for was very orange and definitely had more of a fall vibe. So I did change up the house color and some of the other ones. So when I get to working on it, um, I will share what those changes are. I usually don't wait. I usually wait until the end of a project to share what I have um, converted just because a lot of times I end up um, changing my mind a couple times. But um, I definitely want it to have more of that red house look. I decided to throw in a Thanksgiving small and that was Give Thanks by Tina Waltman. This is part of her early workings or it's early workings by Tina Waltman. I'm not too sure how it goes. And I'm stitching Give Thanks on a piece of 36 count eggshell and I am using DMC. And I'm stitching it one over two. So I had to make sure I finished the G before I put it away. So this will be one that will be really quick to finish when it rolls around on the wheel. Last one is a little Christmas stitch. It's called Merry Christmas Sleigh by Country Rustic Primitives. So this one I had to change um, some of the called for to different DMC and it's just because I didn't have it and it doesn't call for enough of it to you know, warrant uh, picking up uh, a whole skein of thread for it. And I know some of the thread is in with other projects. So I just decided to um, uh, do a, a conversion for it. And all I did was stitch the M. But when I was pressing this, I realized that I was supposed to stitch it this way. So when it comes up in my rotation, I'm gonna have to unpick the M before I go any farther. <laughs> but I am stitching it on a piece of 36 count Legacy and I am using DMC threads. So those are all the projects that I started at the end of June. I already have them loaded up into a wheel and when I finish my assignments, I will be able to hit the spin button and I can't wait to see what rolls up first. And then I'll decide how long I want to work on it. Uh, I don't foresee spinning the wheel for, cause I still, I have to finish Spooky Countdown and then I work on houses. I have my Houses of um, Hawkrun Hollow assignment. And then I've decided to move 
Halloween at Hollyberry Farm into the assignments as well and um, stitch on it for a couple of days. So I'm not sure between now and my next video if any of these will get worked on, but definitely the following video. So I'm excited to begin doing that. Um, I, I feel an excitement for my stitching that I, I had started to um, lose. And so I'm glad that it's, um, it's come back and I'm really looking forward to, to all of these projects. Everything is something that I've wanted to stitch and work on. So I think that adds a lot to my excitement. So can't wait to get to all of those in the next six months. <laughs> In my last video, I did have a giveaway and thank you as always to everyone who played along. The question that I had asked was if you could choose any cross stitching or quilting retreat to attend, which one would you go to and why? And I loved reading through all of the different retreats you guys would go on. Um, so many wonderful ones all across the United States and I hope someday you're able to go. If I call your name, what you will need to do is contact me via email and send me your address and then I will get your prize out in the mail to you. Number one was for the You Are My Sunshine, You Are My Sunshine cross stitch kit by the Fat Quarter Shop. So uh, the winner receives the chart as well as the entire kit to stitch the piece. And the winner is Tanya Parente. Number two was for the Summertime Simply Signs Pattern Series by It's So Emma, and the winner is Karen Evans. Number three was for the uh, Club Chicken called Hank by uh, Lori Holt of BMI Bonnet, and the winner is Terry Lane. Number four is for the Patriotic Typeface Cross Stitch and it's the entire series and the winner is carol pfeiffer it's p-i-f-e-r and number five was for the may stackables by it's so emma and the winner is sharon mahone so congratulations to all the winners again if you can get in touch with me via email send me your address i will get your prize out in the mail to you and i will put my contact information down below in the description box Today's video also has a giveaway and what you will need to do to be eligible to win is like the video, make sure you're a subscriber and answer the question down below indicating which items you are interested in winning. In today's giveaway there are two prizes up for grabs, one for cross stitching and one for quilting. However, if you're interested in both feel free to enter or to indicate you're interested in both of those. Number one is a cross stitch kit by homespun elegance it's called cinnamon stick christmas and it's santa and his toys so if you are interested in winning the chart and the kit to stitch the entire pillow this is number one and number two is uh, a roly poly it's called santa's express and it is half of a uh, jelly roll. So there are 21 two and a half strips in this bundle. So if you are interested in winning it, it is number two. And the question that you will need to answer down below is actually, um, I asked Allison yesterday what a good giveaway question would be. And so she said, ask them what their favorite ice cream is. So down below in the comment section, uh, indicate which items you're interested in winning, one or two, and then tell me what your favorite ice cream is. And in my next video, I will announce a winner. And as always, thank you so very much for playing along. And to answer that question, I think my favorite ice cream would have to be uh, probably butter pecan or pecan, depending on you know where you live in the United States. Uh, and I asked Allison what her favorite ice cream was, and she said uh, Marionberry ice cream, which is made by Tillamook. And so if you're local to this area, uh, Tillamook ice cream will make, uh, it's Marionberry or they'll have Marionberry pie. And she said that's what her favorite was. So 
down below, put your favorite ice cream. And again, in my next video, I will announce the winners. Well, my friends, as far as all of the cross stitching goes, that is all I have to show and share in today's video. I am going to talk about quilts next. So if that's not something you're interested in seeing or hearing, this is a great stopping off point. And if you would like to see what I'm up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. I do have a Facebook page called Pumpkin Hollow Quilting. Uh, the plan uh, will be to be back in two weeks. And everything that I have shown in today's video, I will have listed down in the description box if you are interested. I also will put any corrections if I said the wrong linen, title, what have you. All of that information will be listed down below. But now, quilts. So I decided that since it was a brand new month that I would swap out the quilt hanging up behind me. This one is called the Constitution Quilt, and it is a pattern by Primitive Gatherings. Uh, you can still get it. It is in the book Stars and Stripes Gathering, which um, I've seen it sold on the Primitive Gatherings website. Um, the fabric line that I made my quilt out of um, is not available anymore. Um, you can find bits and pieces of it um, here and there. But uh, Primitive Gatherings almost always has some sort of a patriotic fabric line that comes out. So you definitely could recreate the quilt um, using their newest uh, patriotic fabric lines. I love it. It's one of my favorite patriotic quilts. So I was really happy to be able to hang it up and enjoy it for another month. Okay, here's the dealio. Um, I did not really get a whole lot of time to work on my own quilting. However, I did get some time, but not enough to show. Um, I do have some quilt blocks made for a quilt that I've been working on. Um, I'm working on the Spangled Quilt uh, by Kim Deal. I'm working on it with my friend Retha, but it's not really far enough along to um, show it. And it's kind of one of those quilts where you could show the different blocks, but it's not one that's He's, you would just wonder what I'm doing <laughs> um, because it's different uh, log cabin and star blocks. Um, when the quilt goes all together, it's like, wow. But when you're assembling it, it's kind of hard to tell. So I just decided not to bring any of that in today to show. And then hopefully over the next two weeks, I can get that quilt finished because I only have six more blocks to make. And then I can assemble. But I did receive two amazing quilt kits in the mail. Uh, my friend Cindy, she sent me uh, one quilt that um, she had started, so it's about halfway done, and then another a block of the month quilt kit. So very generous of her to send both of these quilts my way. I will cherish them always. Could not believe it when I opened up the boxes and saw what she had sent me. Uh, she sent me this beautiful card with a sweet note inside. And the first quilt is called Freedom Bound. And uh, it was from, um, it was designed by Denise uh, Lipscomb, Lipcomb uh, from Common Threads Quilting, which I believe um, that shop has now closed. But this was a block of the month in 2016, I think. And it followed the story of Hannah and her children. And this is what it will look like when it's done. And when I was reading, because um, she included the paperwork for uh, the blocks that she had done, and um, the woman who the quilt is um, designed around, I think I've heard her story before. And it's a very fascinating one. So the, um, the quilt... Um, as each block comes out, it tells the story of Hannah, who she uh, was a slave, and her situation was a little bit different because the the man who owned her, I'm guessing, fell in love with her. Um, they ended up having eight children, and before he died, he made sure to get her to Ohio where her and their children uh, would be freed, and then he also read them. Um, I cannot imagine what her life would have been like. I have no idea if she loved him or if it was just survival, but her story is very fascinating. Um, the first block was the introduction, and it looked like this. 
and here it is here. So I think all of the fabric or the fabric line that the quilt was made with was by Nancy Greer, I think. Uh, the next block is called Belmont Plantation. So she was a slave on the Belmont Plantation as well as the children that she had with the, the man who owned her. And I think four blocks had to be made for that one. So here is what the block looks like. So gorgeous. And I have to make sure that I keep all of these in order. Then number three was plantation life. And this is what it looks like. And here's the block. So beautiful. So beautiful. Love it, love it. Uh, next was four, and that was rumors of war. Very pretty. And there were two that had to be made for that one. And this is what it looks like. And then month five was preparing for the journey. Love it, love it. And here's the block. Next up is month six, and that's a dangerous journey. And here is that block. Love it, love it. So I am looking forward to continuing uh, where Cindy left off and I can't wait to get this quilt made and reading more about Hannah and her children's journey as I go along. The second quilt kit that she sent me is called Latimer Farms by Red Crinoline Quilts. And I just decided to leave it in the packaging so I don't lose it. But this is a gorgeous quilt kit. I cannot wait to start working on it. I love it. And the, and the colors are absolutely gorgeous. So very excited. A lot of fun projects. A lot of fun projects in my future. Then she sent me one more thing. And that is a stack of Civil War strips. I believe these are about three inches. So this will be perfect for a quilt that I have been slowly uh, working on. Um, I have been, from every quilt that I work on, I cut off a three or three and a half inch square and I stack them up. And then as I am working on quilt blocks, I will um, send them through as my leaders and enders because I want to make a half square triangle quilt. Um, so this will be perfect for that particular project, as well as some other projects um, that I have planned going forward. So thank you so very much, Cindy. I've already been in contact with her, but it was so very generous of her to send all of these wonderful kits and the strips my way. I cannot wait to begin working on these new projects. So exciting. Thank you so very much. Well, my friends, as far as all of the quilting and the cross stitching goes, that is all I have to show and share in today's video. If you've stuck around for this length of time, thank you so very much. I really, really appreciate it. And if you're brand new here and you liked what you saw, I hope you will consider subscribing. I do upload videos every two weeks and we try to have fun here. <laughs> Uh, the plan for me will be to continue working on my assignments, uh, to work on the Kim deal. I hope I didn't say Kate Spade. There was one time where I said I'm working on, it was, a, it was something involving Kim deal fabric and I called her Kate Spade. So I'm hoping I called it Kim deal, but it is a spangled quilt by Kim deal. So I do hope to have that one show to show you next week. Uh, Cause I only had those last six blocks to assemble. If you would like to see what I'm up to in between my videos, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm pumpkin hollow quilts and I do have a Facebook page called pumpkin hollow quilting. And I will put a link to those places down below if you're interested, as well as I will list everything I've shown in today's video down in the description box. If you are at all curious, thank you so very much for stopping by today and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.